Cheats! They're not unlike cheat codes, but if I was forced to define them, I would say they're more like manipulations or quirks of the system that allow you to gain some sort of benefit. They can be glitches or skips, or even little tricks that can be used for more than you originally thought they could be. Without spoiling too much though, there's a lot to cover, so let's jump straight into the list. Top 10 Exploits in Video Games! Let's start things off with some basic Mario. There's a lot of different things you can do in the original Mario Brothers. I think most famously you've probably already heard of the infinite lives glitch at the end of 3-1. If you can time your jump just right on the second Koopa at the end of the stage, you can just get as many lives as you'd want. Wow, infinite lives? Now I don't even have to get good at the video game. How about the fact that you can actually jump over the pole in two different levels? It's not really an exploit, but I, I guess it's kind of cool. If you also jump at a corner just right, you can actually pass through a block entirely. In fact, you use this trick to get to the infamous Minus World. Whoa, mate. It's all right. I mean, you just kind of swim. How about we switch things up a little bit and go to Super Mario World? Now, the original Super Mario World is probably one of my favorite games of all time. And when it comes to games that you've grown up with and love, it's always fun to watch someone who's perfected the mechanics crush, and in this case, exploit the game into giving you something you shouldn't have. So this is by far one of my favorite exploits in the game. In order to do this trick, you have to start a new game and go to the second level. You can play the level like normally until you get to this point where you have to grab Yoshi. This is where the exploit starts and it requires some really good timing, so don't worry if you don't do it on the first try, it's pretty hard. Start running as Yoshi and grab the first red shell you see. Do a short hop and spit out the shell, which turns into a fireball. It has to be a really specific height to work, so try to line it up with the top of this bush here. Now run as fast as you can, pick up the next green shell you see, and do another two short hops and land on this ledge. From here you have to crouch and release the shell so that the fireball can hit it. So release the shell and then do a very light tap to turn around. Now we wait just a little bit. The fireball will hit the shell, turning it into a coin. And right when the coin hits about here, you have to turn around and press X and A at the same time, and then immediately following, press R to pan the screen to the right. If you can manage to do all of that successfully, you'll end up with a cloud in your inventory. Oh, whoa. So there's a couple reasons why this is actually really cool. As long as you don't get hit or pick up another power-up, you can take a cloud anywhere you want in the game. You know what? Screw jumping! I'm going to the skies! Mole, even he's impressed, even though it took me over a hundred tries and two hours to get down, just so I could have like five seconds of footage. Now there's another reason why this is really important. You can actually use the cloud in the last boss fight against Bowser, and doing so actually glitches him out, speeding up the entire fight, which is why it's used in speedruns. But what you can't do is use it against this guy, because if you do, it glitches you out and you die. Also, fair warning, if you do the glitch wrong, then you can actually just crash your game. The Witcher 3 is one of those games that seems like it was made specifically for me. It caters to all my needs. You know, witching, monster hunting. The problem with putting newer games on a list like this is that most of the exploits are eventually patched out. But for how simple this exploit is, this has to be one of the best patch responses I've ever seen. When the game was released, it was found out that you could break the economy by killing cows over and over again. The reason you would want to do this is because things are expensive. 139 coins for a shirt? Why would you do that? I don't know guys, I don't even know if I can afford to even be a witcher. What's that? Ew, finding items by adventuring? That sounds lame and also inconvenient. Why not just cheat instead, why don't we? So what you have to do is go to the first major town in the game and find this area right here. What we're looking for is a couple cows that we can use to exploit the game. If they're not here, you can simply meditate for a couple hours and they'll probably be back. Kill the two cows, meditate for a couple hours, rinse, and repeat. That's it. Before this was patched, this was actually an incredibly good way to make a lot of money. All you would have to do is sit here and kill an infinitely respawning amount of cows. The key item we're looking for here are cow hides, which they occasionally drop. It doesn't take very long to amass a huge stack which you can go sell for a lot of money. That is, until it was recently patched. Now if you try to do it, a giant bull-like creature named Chort will come kill you! Oh no! I die. He's really big and scary, but you can't dodge him by doing a barrel roll like... It doesn't work sometimes. 
He's pretty shy and he's not very good at making friends with the locals. So now we just lead him to the other guards and then have them do the work for us. Would you look at that? I'm really doing it all by myself. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually kill this guy. Part of me does think that you could if you were strong enough, but I'm definitely not strong enough. So I'll leave it at that. Sonic Boom! No, no, wait, hold on, hold on a second, don't click out of the video! Aww, man! Sonic Boom is not very good. You probably didn't even need me to tell you that. One glance at the reviews and Let's Plays on YouTube and you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. So why even exploit a game like this? How about to make it end faster? It's gonna be like ripping off a band-aid. All we have to do is pause and jump! Aw, oh, man, this is a good one, Sega! It's really good! You really did it! You really outdid yourself this time! How, how do you let this happen? How do you let it happen? Going back to the original, Mega Man can be one of the hardest things you've ever had to do. This game is hardcore and easily stands as one of the most difficult games on the NES. Sometimes the deaths can be so cheap and the game's so hard that it almost physically hurts. It's kind of like that one game where you hold out your hands and the other guy's like... And you're just like... Uh. Yeah, it's like that. And although it can be one of the hardest video gaming experiences out there, to this day it remains satisfying to complete these games on just your wits and your skill. Or we could cheat! Because the game's pretty hard. In Mega Man, there's a very easy exploit that anyone can do. The game has two different pause buttons, select and start. Start brings up a menu where you can switch your powers around, but select simply pauses the game with no delay. If you fire a weapon that doesn't disappear, you can repeatedly pause the game over and over with select to hit the enemy multiple times. Easy peasy, now I just have to finish him off and... Die, I forgot to mention that part, that's, that's part of it, don't forget that. This glitch is most famously used on the Yellow Devil because of how hard he is. Look guys, I'm doing it! With skill. Get at the game and I'm really good. Originally, I wanted to put Diddy Kong Racing on this list because I felt it was necessary to have some sort of racing game on here. I mean, if I can't find a way to cheat my way out of the respected tradition of racing, then what good am I? But the exploits were actually a lot harder than I thought they would be, and I ended up spending hours trying to learn them, and not getting a single one. So... Mario Kart 64! I'm okay with this. In racing games, the biggest discoveries are usually ones that allow you to trick the game into thinking you've completed laps, or find a shortcut that saves you insane amounts of time. And in Mario Kart 64, there's exactly those things, go figure. The most famous one is probably this one on Rainbow Road, because it's pretty easy to figure out on your own. Just start the match normally, and if you build up enough speed, just jump off the side to the left. Wait. It saves you about half a lap, so if you manage to do this every time, you'll be well ahead of the other CPUs. The next skip takes place on Wario Stadium. If you can time a jump perfectly going over these little hills while steering to the left, you'll actually just jump over the barrier. If you can manage to do this on every lap, you'll have no problem beating this on any difficulty. Why not just do it on the way back too and skip the entire race? If we time a jump perfectly against this wall right on the other side of the goal line, we'll actually just jump over the wall and skip an entire lap. If you can perfect these two techniques, this race is over in a matter of seconds and times like this are possible. The hardest and arguably one of the coolest skips comes on Jungle Parkway. If you start the race, turn around and go right to this spot, you can actually glitch through this side of the wall. Setting this one up is kind of difficult because you need just enough speed to make it through this part and onto the other side. If you do it correctly though, you'll trigger the next lap immediately. And if it doesn't trigger right away, then you have to take the drive of shame back to the finish line to see if it worked. Oh no, now everyone's gonna know I'm really bad at video games now that I'm showing this here footage right here on the screen. I couldn't do it! I don't deserve you guys' love! I'm sorry! I'M SORRY! I died a... Super Smash Bros. Melee is kind of an anomaly on this list because the most obvious and accepted exploit is so widely used. It's pretty easy to forget it's an exploit in the first place, and I wouldn't be covering my bases very well if I didn't at least mention wave dashing. In the newer Smash Brothers games, when you dodge in midair, you actually just dodge in place, but in melee, you can directionally dodge with... Sheer Willpower! Or something. 
Eventually, it was figured out that if you directionally dodged diagonally at the ground from a short hop, you could glide a short distance really fast. The reason this is so widely utilized is because not only does it allow you to be incredibly mobile, but it doesn't lock your character out of doing any of his or her specific moves. Clearly, I have perfected this amazing technique. If by perfected, you also mean not at all. But it's so accepted at this point, it's kind of hard to make it a main entry on this list. As it turns out though, there is another exploit we can perform in the game. You could possibly argue that it's more of a cheat, but there's so many manipulations going on that it's hard to pass up. First, what we need to do is make sure that there's a controller plugged into the third port. Then we delete all the names except for one, and this is used for positioning purposes. Make sure there's no character selected for player 3. Position player 3's cursor over the name selection and press A and B at the same time. Briefly let go of A and then press A again. If you press A too soon, you'll go back to the name entry screen, and if you press it too late, you're booted back out to the menu. If you manage to time it perfectly, however, you'll force the game to the stage selection screen. But we don't have a character selected if you remember, so I wonder what's gonna happen. Ready? Go! <laughs> yep, that's right, you get to play as Master Hand. The reason this worked is because we manipulated the game to go past the character selection screen. But because we didn't have a character selected, it loads the first character on the roster, which just so happens to be Master Hand. Master Hand can only load in the third character slot, so we just kind of lined everything up properly for it to work. Master Hand is kind of weird though. He doesn't control like other characters, and he can't die. But it's lots of fun to mess around with. Yeah, you get to fist people. Wait, no, that's not what- You can't play with Master Hand on the majority of the levels. In fact, most of them just crash outright. Some of them get kind of glitchy like this. Don't worry, Kirby. I'm coming. I'll be up in a sec. And if you win the match, the game crashes. Incredible! It's probably no surprise to anyone that Bethesda games are kind of glitchy. Yeah... Skyrim in particular has some of my favorite glitches and exploits. A couple years back, I actually used Skyrim in a segment about useless items, thinking that plates themselves were useless. I mean, come on, dinnerware? They're such an aesthetic item. How useful could they possibly- Oh... Oh no... Whoops. As it turns out, you can use plates and platters to glitch into walls and go out of bounds. Now I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be at all, outside of Whiterun. But I'm still inside of, of Whiterun. You get me? Oh my god, it's so beautiful out here. I can't even believe it. If we circle around the city walls, we can actually go through this part of the wall right here and get access to the Skyforge chest, which gives us access to all kinds of free goodies. So equip all the different kinds of items and... Why not go on a killing spree to prove my self-worth? Man, I really feel good about myself and the cheating that I did to get this stuff. I deserve it. I'm basically unstoppable now, so I can do whatever I want. 20 dragons. Well, maybe not whatever I want. There's always been some pretty famous exploits in the early Pokemon games. It's pretty crazy to think that to this day, people are still finding new and interesting glitches for both new and old games, and Pokemon is no different. No doubt by now you know of the famous Missing No glitch. Once you've acquired Fly, you can go back to Pallet Town and talk to the old man. Let him teach you how to catch a Pokemon, but then fly away to Cinnabar Island. Go to the right side of the island and use Surf, but stay on the edge going up and down. Eventually you'll run into Missing No, and finding him has some pretty strange side effects. Arguably the most useful thing is that the item you're carrying in the 6th item slot will duplicate to 128, making it so you can have infinite uses of something like a rare candy or Master Ball. But for this list I want to mix it up a little bit and show you guys something that's maybe not as well known. Like, did you know you can manipulate the game into giving you a level 100 Pokemon before you even reach the first gym leader? It definitely takes a little bit of patience, but it is possible. First, play the game until you reach Viridian Forest, and then make sure you only have one Pokemon left in your party. You have to defeat these two trainers and then head towards the exit. Right before you exit Viridian Forest, this guy will stop you. But don't get too ahead of yourself because we're trying to trigger a battle on the exact square that he recognizes us. It can definitely take a lot of tries. Alright, here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, f fourteen. This is bull crap. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it. No one's doing it. There comes a time in everyone's life where they have to make a decision. 
you know, like, do, do I want to go with like, Tim's Cascade or just regular potato chips? And realistically, that has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on here. But I will press on. I will press on. So once you have all of that finally set up, you have to die! What the fuck? Seems a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it's what you're supposed to do. What this does is take you back to the Pokemon Center and set up a glitch. Now, the next time we re-enter Viridian Forest, a battle will trigger and the resulting Pokemon can be from a number that we can control. The results can give you some pretty interesting things. I found a level 1 fully evolved Slowbro. What the Pokemon you find is determined by the special stat of the last Pokemon you saw. We're trying to find a Nidoking specifically, which we can manipulate by finding a level 3 Pidgey first. Then we can even change the level of the Pokemon we encounter by repeatedly growling at the Pidgey. If we growl at the Pidgey a total of 6 times, then the level of the Pokemon that we encounter will be level 1. This is important because you're not traditionally supposed to be able to find level 1 Pokemon. So we do all this, catch ourselves a level 1 Nidoking, and when he levels up... Profits! Alternatively, I guess you could just use Fly to set up the same glitch anywhere. Wait, what? If this list is any indication so far, it's that N64 games can be pretty glitchy. Some of the most interesting and mind-boggling exploits can be found within The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Aw oh, man, you mean I have to go to the Deku Tree and do the beginning of the game for the 100th time? Yawn. What if I just leave the forest instead? That sounds good. But wait a second, this guy's in my way. Or is he? Now I'm stuck between him forever! Oh no! Link's adventure is over! He'll never escape the clutches of the Kokiri! But maybe if I just move him just a little bit... There we go! Bye bye! Now I'm outside in Hyrule Field with just an ocarina! Wow, I have so much freedom! I can do whatever I want! So how about we exploit the game some more? If we go to Kakariko Village and collect all the chickens, we can get a bottle. There's a bunch of different glitches we can do with a bottle. Did you ever think that maybe four bottles just wasn't enough? How about we remedy that situation? There we go, now I have all bottles. I'm gonna be invincible. It actually doesn't matter that I replaced the ocarina because we can perform a glitch called ocarina items. If we drop the contents of a bottle and then pick it up again, Link will be carrying a full bottle which is represented by a blue looking bottle model. You following me? We need Link to be carrying a full bottle to perform the exploit, so once the bottle's out, don't put it away. Now you can do a backflip, press the button for the full bottle, and then quickly press the sword button. And now we're playing our sword as an ocarina! It makes sense, I mean, if, if you don't think about it. I do it all the time! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh no! I think we've saved the world plenty, why don't we break the game even more? By beating it! If we perform the Ocarina items glitch perfectly on the edge of the blue light that spawns after defeating the first boss Goma, we can stop the cutscene from playing and gain control of Link for a short time. If you move through this part perfectly, which is kind of hard to explain, you can exit the map and look at that, you're at the end of the game! Okay, bye. Oh, look at that. Gandorf's dead. I did that. Now we just have to go down the tower and then we go and fight Ganon once more and... we die. Okay, well, yeah. That sounds about right. Nothing like winding down with a bit of good old fashioned Super Mario 64. Who doesn't like exploring all those different worlds and getting all those secret stars? Wait a second, there's a hundred and twenty of these things? How could you do this to me, Toad? How could you do it? Don't worry guys, I know some tricks that are gonna get us through the game way faster. Before you know it, you're gonna be eating that sweet, sweet cake. Mmm, yeah. The first thing you're going to have to do is play the game. Until you have 15 stars to be exact. Once you have enough stars, you should also take a detour, defeat Bowser for the first time and get the key. Next, head down to the basement and this is why you needed 15 stars. Having 15 stars was actually the trigger for Mips the Bunny to spawn. Catch him! Don't you dare get that star though. Because Mips is actually the key to everything. Pick him up and take him with you to this door. If you position yourself just right, as you drop Mips, you'll glitch through the door. Go into the crawling position, turn back around and grab Mips through the door. Then you can place him on the other side of the door like this. Now you can go through the door and pick him up and take him with you to the next star door. We're actually going to use him again to glitch through this door as well. If you go into the door at this precise angle and then drop Mips as soon as you hit the crack in the door, you'll actually go through the door. 
Now all we have to do is get the first star in Dire Dire Docks, and then we can go and fight Bowser for the second time. So essentially, we just skipped a third of the game without even having to try that hard. Alright, all we gotta do is throw Bowser at the bomb. Uh... Throw him at the bomb. Throw him at the bomb. It's not working. Oh my god, it's the key! I did it. Players eventually found out that you could endlessly long jump backwards. This in combination with another exploit makes the game beatable in as little as 16 stars. In fact, you can even beat the game with zero stars. But that one is a little bit harder to pull off, and I messed it up. Oh no, everyone's gonna think I'm a big phony. And they're all gonna think I'm really bad at video games. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> What I can do though is the backwards long jump and you can use it in two different locations. On the upper level of the castle you'll see another set of stairs that takes you up to the clock level. If you can manage to orient yourself just right and perform the endless long jump backwards up the stairs then you'll actually just pass through the door. Do it one more time going up the endless stairs and you've essentially beaten the game. Now all you have to do is beat the last version of Bowser and you did it! You win! Thank you so much for watching everybody, I want to thank everyone I've met in my entire life. They, uh, they definitely helped me by doing most of the work for me, probably. So, no, no, thank you so much for ever- thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked the video, then be sure to click the like button. And if you want to see some more videos like these, you can always click subscribe. I also have this new thing called Facebook and Twitter. It's pretty new. I'm jumping on the bandwagon early. So be sure to follow those things if you want to stay updated on my channel. And if you just can't wait for more videos, then I got two more videos for you right there. Sonic bootleg games and the top 10 most annoying enemies. That's it for me this time, guys. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.